Are you excited to start making some scrapbooks about your family and your family history? Maybe you want to get a film away for gifts or capture the reunion you've had? Wonderful. So hopefully you've gotten Photoshop elements installed on your computer. The latest version is 2018 and now you have no idea how to use the program. Today is your lucky day because we're going to start with the beginner basics. Howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee and this is Family History Fanatics. If you have used Photoshop Elements before, this is probably not the video for you, but if you are a little bit clueless on your how to use Photoshop Elements 2018, then I'm so glad you found this video. Let's get started with the simple fact of how do we open up the program and create a new file. The first thing we need to do is click on our desktop icon for Photoshop Elements and have it load. And there will be all kinds of advertisements and special features announcements, but you want to ignore all of this right now and come down to the button that says Photo Editor. Don't feel bad that you didn't know that's how you're supposed to use it. I'm here to help. Double click on that one and we'll get started. So this is the Photoshop Editor of Photoshop Elements. This is where you're going to create your layouts that you're then going to export and send them off to a printing company. So this is your work surface. You've got your menu bars across the top that you're familiar with that all programs have. They have menu bars across the top. You have icons down the side that we will definitely be using frequently. Um, as we go throughout this video, you'll start to see different things pop up around the screen. But the very first thing you want to do is start a new project. So come on up here to File, New, Blank File. Kind of obvious. Now, this is your new file window. And one of the things I like to do is go ahead and rename my file right now. Just give it a working title. I'm going to be doing um, scrapbooking some pioneer uh, photos from a pioneer event here in Texas that my children went to. So why don't we just call it Pioneer Day? It doesn't have to be set fancy, just something that's going to help me remember what the photos were about. Now I need to get the size of my project. Now I'm a big fan of eight and a half by 11 vertical scrapbook pages, but some of you like the rectangles. So Photoshop Elements was kind of designed for scrapbookers in mind. So you could just come down to this preset for scrapbooking. They default to 12 by 12. It's the most commonly used size, but you also have eight by eight and they're six by six, but please avoid using six by six. Those books are just really, really too small and not worth the time and energy you're going to spend creating your album. So eight by eight or 12 by 12. But as I said, I'm a huge fan of eight and a half by 11. So I'm gonna go up and use the paper setting and then I'm not gonna change anything else on this screen. It has the 300 DPI setting, which is required for your printers to print out a good quality image. You can bump it up if you want, but it's kind of a taxing on your computer. So just go ahead and leave it at 300 DPI, your color RGB color and a white background for starters. There you have it. You have your new file. Let's go ahead and talk about saving because we will save often. So how do you do it? You come on up to file, save as and go to the folder that you're going to save your files. Now, Photoshop Elements has their files called PSD. That's the file that creates all the magic and then eventually you'll export it to something else. But if you want to reopen this project and have all the different um, pieces assembled, you need to make sure it stays PSD right now just in case you were wondering. Remember, I said this was a basic video. If I skip over one of your questions, be sure to put them in the comments. So look, it already has the name of the file. The only thing I need to do is come over here and press that save button. So my file will be saved. Photoshop Elements does not automatically save your files, but if you ever close it out, or try to, it will ask you, did you want to save? So it's kind of a nice little reminder before you close out, but you do want to save often because the file size does get pretty large. 
Now, one more thing before we move on to actually doing something with this uh, workspace is some of you might actually like the um, 11 by 8.5 uh, format in your scrapbooks. That is a popular scrapbooking size. So in order to turn the paper to an 11 by 8.5, don't try to change the settings in the new file. Just come down here and hit rotate or rotate back to go back up to the vertical orientation. Now, you're not going to use this when you need to rotate photos. We'll tell you about how to rotate photos in a future video, but you do know now how to rotate your entire work surface between a landscape and portrait layout. Whew, that's a lot to get started. And I'm so glad that you've stuck with us. So now we're going to talk about how do we bring photos into Photoshop Elements? Well, there's a number of ways. One way is to come up to open, um, navigate to the folder that has the images you want. You can open multiple images at one time. Left mouse click on the first one, hold your shift key down, go to the um, remaining photos that you want and click open and they'll be opened down here in your photo tray. Now option number two is to drag from a folder method. I'm going to come over here and get Windows Explorer. To hold down our left mouse click, we drag a box, or we hold down the Shift key after clicking on the first image, click on the last, release the Shift key, and then drag and drop into Photoshop Elements. Now the third way is I don't have time to go over how to get your photos into Photoshop Elements Organizers, but if you watch that video first, then this is how you go over to Elements Organizer and bring them over into your work surface. So this is the Photoshop Elements Organizer. As you can see, I have some modern photos as well as some of my historic photos. I left mouse click on the first one, hold, and I can hold my shift key and click on all the photos that I want to bring over. They need to be in order. And then come down here to the edit icon and now they're opened over here in Photoshop Elements. So there you have it, three ways to open images in Photoshop Elements so now you can put them on your layout. Now. I have a feeling that I'm going to create a two-page layout rather than a single-page layout. We call those double-page spreads, and you'll see a lot of those, especially on my channel. So, how do we get from 8.5 by 11 to a two-page spread? Come on up to Image, Resize, in a Canvas Size. Now, all I need to do is double the width. 8.5 becomes 17. I don't change the 11. Press OK, and now I have a two-page spread. Any idea where the middle is? Aha, I have a trick. Click on the ruler with your left mouse button. Now, over here, there's the ruler. Hold down your left mouse button. Now you have a vertical line. Pretty cool. Eyeball eight, the eight and a half mark and release. There is this magnifying glass icon up here. If I click on that, and magnify this area right here. I can go back to the select arrow and then I can move my guideline. There we go. That <laughs> just really look. Get it to the eight and a half by eight and a half mark, and now I know where my left side and my right side of my image is. Not bad. So before we close out this tutorial, I want you to see how you can add your photos to this layout. You need to make sure that you have selected your work surface, the pages that will become part of your scrapbook. Then you use your left mouse button and you're going to click but not double click because if you double click, now you're with that other image. We don't want the other image. We want to stay on the work surface. So hold down your left mouse button on the image you want to drag onto your work surface and release. Now let's zoom in again, we'll go up to that magnifying glass because I want you to see something. If I click on select and I click on the image, do you see this little bounding box that go all the round, way around the image? If I get the diagonal line, then I can resize the image, I can make it smaller and it doesn't take change the proportion of the image. See? I'm going to zoom out so you can see that. 
it doesn't change the proportion, right? It doesn't go all skewy. And then you click the green arrow. If you want to move it, all you have to do is hold down your left mouth button, then you can move it anywhere you want. And when you let go, it's in place. Okay, let's do it one more time. Get a second image up here. Because where did my photos go? Well, they're hidden in the photo bin. Because you notice this little space area changes depending on what you're doing. When I'm looking at the photo bin, I can bring an, an image up to my work surface. When I start doing things like zooming in or playing around with the size, then the information down here changes based on the tool I'm using. But if I want to go back to my photo bin, it's right there waiting for me. Okay, so it's not hiding. Although it did take me a while, my first time using Photoshop Elements to understand where things disappeared. One final little quick trick you might want to find handy, and that's how to rotate an image on my work surface. So again, those bounding boxes, right? The ones there all around, it doesn't matter which one you get. When it switches from the diagonal line to the around the corner, two arrows going around a corner, that's your rotator. Not bad, huh? So you can rotate your image that way. And then I can rotate this image the other way. And now I have tilted photos. Let's zoom back out again to see what that looks like. Not bad, I have tilted photos. So one final thing before we close out this basic video, I know I'm get it, getting long, but I just want to make sure that you're not left behind in the future videos. So let's talk about this layer palette. Now, the item at the top of the list is the one that's on top. The item at the bottom of the list is the items at the bottom of the list, and then it's in order in between. Let's say you want this image to be above that image. Hmm, it's not. What do I do? I come over to this layer palette and I can drag up or down. It doesn't matter as long as you do one. I'm going to hold down the left mouse button on one of the layers and either lower it or raise it to create the tucked effect. Do you see? This photo is tucked behind that one. If I don't like that, I can either put undo or just hold my left mouse button and click it up. But the one thing we can't do, if you ever see this icon down here, down by, it says background and it has like a little lock, that means you can't actually move anything below the background because that layer is locked. There you have it. Those are some basics to get you started using Photoshop Elements. I hope you'll stay tuned for future videos here on Family History Fanatics. If you have any questions that you aren't finding the answer to on YouTube or you just think I explain it better, be sure to put them in the description below and I can't wait to see what you create.